Amen. I think all of our kids have gone to Junior Jam in Jamtown, and it's great to be here this morning just to hear this great testimony. And uh, Lindsay, um, you're my niece, but girl, you can you can speak anytime you want to. Aaron, I think Aaron was in our early service, and she may have slipped out, but it's it's always a joy to hear from them and to, and. Uh, just to see what God is doing and continuing to do. So thank you all so much for sharing and, and for Brad and Elizabeth, your leadership and helping these young adults out. And it's just a tremendous opportunity. And, and I just want to continue to speak on some of the things that they've mentioned. We are this month going to begin a new series looking at joy and what that means for us as we just discover what joy means to each and every one of us and how to live in joy and to let joy kind of direct our steps at sometimes, but I thought it would be interesting today just to talk about um, what it's like sometimes to understand our steps and to know how important each step of every day that we take, because as we focus on college students, that's a kind of a pivotal point as, as those high school graduates are going to be starting college and then all of the college students going back and even those that have graduated college and then that transition into the real world uh, as we know it and, and jobs and all that kind of stuff. And those that are um, getting married, we're, we have some of those of our students that are getting married this summer. And so it's just going to be an incredible time. But it's important for us every single day to look at the steps that we take. And that's why today I want to talk about one step at a time in the, in the time that we have remaining. Because it's important for us to know um, what is going on around us. You know, many of us may think that we have our life planned out for us. Some of us really hope we do. I mean, that's our goal is to have all of our life. This is what I want to do. I'm going to go to college for this and I'm going to, you know, marry this type of person and we're going to have this number of kids and, uh, you know, this is going to be my income and this is the profession I want to go into. And as we have heard, sometimes you need to be careful about those plans. It's important to have goals and the plans for our life. But it's also important for us that as we step in this journey of faith, that you've got to realize you and I are not in control of that journey. <laughs> We're really not in control of our life, if we be honest. We're not. We may have plans and goals, but we don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. And that's why it's important for us today to understand every step that we take. The steps that you take today are going to impact every other step that you take the ones that are in the future. And that's why I think it's important for all of us to be reminded of that. And so today we're going to look at one step at a time. And why do we need to worry about one step at a time? Why is it important to stop and to think about that? I want to share with you three things today that I think are important as we look at every step that we take because that's important. The first thing that I want to share with you is to make sure of each step. Why is every step important? Because we need to make sure that every step each and every step is, we need to make sure of that step. There's a great psalm in Psalm chapter 37, verse 23, that says this. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Now, a couple of things we can learn from this just simple verse. The one who delights in him. That's talking about our focus upon who God is. When we focus upon God, He promises to make our steps firm. Have you ever been walking through the woods and you get it, you know, you, maybe it's rained or whatever and there's a lot of mud and you're wearing your boots and you step in some mud or a mud puddle and your foot does not move? Have you ever been in that where you've stepped and it's like, if I take one more step, I'm leaving my boot and I'm just going to be, and you have to make the decision. What are you going to do at that time? Because it stops you in your tracks. Sometimes that happens to us when we're not sure about the step that we're about to take. Here's another example. Many of you know that I hate snakes. That's one of those questions when I get to heaven, I'm going to say, God, really snakes? Why? Why? God, I just don't like them. A good snake is a dead snake to me. And I know every snake has their purpose. Some snakes eat other snakes and I cheer them on, but I don't want to be there when they do it. I just don't like snakes. So when I go into the woods, I'm always looking for snakes. It could be the dead of winter, but I'm still looking for snakes because I just don't like them. And here's what I do sometimes, especially when I'm alone. I will look and observe my path. I will throw stones in the areas that I'm uncomfortable with, and I will carry a stick. 
Because I want to make sure that if there's a snake there, they know that I'm coming or I can see them move and I'm going to change my path. I just don't like snakes because I have to be sure of every step that I'm taking in the woods. I have to know and I have to be sure. What does it mean to be sure? Well, I Googled that (laughs) like I always do. Sure is this idea of being definite or being certain of something or it's indisputable. Now, I like that word because that, say, that speaks to me. That says something because there's a lot of things that are debatable, but this is an indisputable. That's what it means to be sure. So when <clears throat> I read a verse that said, the Lord makes firm the steps of those who delight in him. And I'm thinking, you know, in my spiritual journey, if I'm going to make sure of my steps, then I need to do one thing. Because a lot of us, sometimes we don't know how to make our steps sure. We don't know how to make them definite or certain or indisputable. So I've learned that how can you make sure of your steps? You let somebody else lead you. Now, this is the interesting thing because sometimes when we let somebody else lead us, it's the wrong person that's leading us. Have you ever asked for directions from somebody and hopefully it's not your spouse and they've got you lost? Because I know that happens sometimes. Are you, it's so funny. I wish y'all could see this, how many heads are turning, looking at different people. I'm not going to point out who, but that's interesting. Okay. I'm going to make a mental note of that. But anyway, sometimes we ask and people lead us down the wrong path and, and, and we're not sure of the direction or the path we're going or the steps that we're taking. But let me tell you this, when scripture reminds us over and over and over and over again, that if you focus upon the Lord, he will make your steps firm. You're not going to end up in a mud puddle where you can't take another step and your boot is stuck. You're not going to find yourself on the path and you just don't know about that because you know there's some critters out there. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, then he's going to help us. So one of the things that I've learned is that if we're going to look at every step we take to make sure of every step, don't step somewhere where you think, hmm, I don't know about this. There's some doubt about this. I don't know about this person that's leading me because I'm just not sure. That's where God is saying, listen, wake up. (laughs) Be very careful about your steps because we need to make those sure. The second thing that I want to share with you is that we are to enjoy every step. Not just make make sure of every step, but to enjoy every step. This is why we look at every single step that we take. Because sometimes we get so busy that we lose sight of what's going on around us. You know, one of the good things about hearing testimonies from people or stories from other people is we begin to hear their experience of what they've gone through. And so it reminds us, hey, listen, I was like that one time. Lindsay, you may not believe it, but there was a time where I was afraid to talk in front of people. And sometimes I still am. But it's one of these things where we learn from other people. We get a different perspective when we hear of things. And God's word says that sometimes we do need to stop. Sometimes we do need to realize that God's not finished, that this isn't the end. This isn't all there is, that there's more to it. If we will listen to God, if we will seek God, if we will turn our lives over to God and let him guide us and lead us. Psalms chapter 37, three says this, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. Now, that's an incredible message and promise to each and every one of us. Trust in the Lord. Again, we're given a command, an issue from the psalmist that says, if you put your trust in God, if you will seek after God, if you will delight in the Lord, then good things are going to happen. And so what we have to do is trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land, because he's talking about live where God wants you to. Dwell in the land and enjoy the safe pastures. You know, sometimes, folks, I think we get so busy that we don't enjoy this journey that we're on. Sometimes we get so bombarded by everything in life that sometimes we don't realize that the very steps that we are taking are steps in the presence of God. Sometimes you and I get so confused sometimes about what God wants for your life that we don't realize that if we just take a step of faith, then that step of faith puts us in the presence of God. You know, that's why we've been talking about peace. And we talked about that and learned about that. 
Because in God's presence, in that step, we can enjoy what God has promised us. But too many times, if you're like me, you get so busy. You get so worried about things. You get so consumed by schedules. Talking about schedules. Everybody got their schedules this last week. It's this idea that, oh, we got to get back into that routine. Well, sometimes we just need to stop and enjoy the presence of God and, and to remember what God has done for us. I'm reminded of the story in Luke chapter 10, that familiar story of Martha and Mary when Jesus came to visit them. And you know the story. Martha was just so busy with everything that she didn't enjoy the presence of God. And where was Mary? At the feet of Jesus, listening and just being there. In his presence. Folks, sometimes you and I are going to have to stop. Because instead of stepping, we're just running through life. And what we do is we miss the opportunities that God may be doing to do a great thing in your life. Sometimes we get so consumed following somebody else and running after somebody else, whether that's in a relationship or a friendship or a clique or whatever it might be, and we forget that God is asking us to take a step in him, and we don't enjoy it. Folks, we need to learn to enjoy each and every step. Third thing that I want to share with you, and this is the last point, is to make sure you don't forget your steps. Make sure you don't forget your steps. There's a great passage I want to share with you in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, and it says this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, one of the things that I can always fall back on when I, when I learn something new, and I, like Aaron shared, where we learn something about God's Word that kind of makes one of those what I call aha moments. It's like, oh, I didn't realize that. That, that puts it in a different picture. Or, or when we're faced with those opportunities like Lindsay talked about, and we're like, I can't do this. I am so unworthy to do this. And all we have to do, folks, is to remember, what has God done in your step? That step when you realize that you were separated from God, and God said, I love you enough to, to leave you there. I love you deeply enough that I'm not going to leave you there, that I sent my son to die on the cross for you so that you could have a new life. If you trust and accept what he did for you. And see, that's a step in this journey of faith that we're on. We never, never should forget. But always remember what God is doing. Remember what God has done. Remember what God has promised in your life. Because when you do that, it's going to help you to realize every step that you've taken in your life. So I'm going to ask you today as we... Think about these testimonies we've heard and what we've heard today. What step is God asking you to take today? I had an opportunity this summer to take a step, uh, a great step of faith. And it was one of those things that as I look back and reflect upon it, that, you know, it was a step of courage, in fact, in my mind at the time, it was a step close to death. <laughs> You've heard this story, Scott. You know those, um, well, let me share this. In, in our family, I, I love amusement parks, roller coasters, and those kind of things. But in our family, Noah and Missy are the daredevils. I'm not. You know, um, they, they'll, they'll do whatever. And they always talk about these experiences. And, and the one that they love is these, um, these, you know, pendulum swing things where they pull you up and you're in that harness. And then you have to pull the cord, which is a whole nother sermon on that. But you pull the cord and it just drops you and you just kind of go off on this thing. And I've always said, I will never, 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 never ride that. But then Noah and Missy have done it a number of times. And they always talk about that experience. And so I said this summer when we were on vacation in Six Flags in St. Louis, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to take a step. Because it's one of these things. I, I can ride roller coasters. I can go upside down, sideways, inside out. It doesn't matter. But the drop down, which is always the first thing you do, that drop down is one of those things where I come so close to God 
I don't, it's like I want to keep doing that because I feel so close to God. But I had to take this step and I said, okay, I'm going to do this. And, and I just want to show you a picture of what I'm talking about if you don't know. That's a picture of Noah from a distance. But they have these, you know, big old poles and, and they put you in the harness. And so they pull you up in between these two beams kind of thing. And of course, you can see he's horizontal and everything looks good. Except for the fact, because let me give you a little encouragement if you've never done one of these before. It's a slow ride up to the top. <laughs> As they pull you up. Now, I was in the middle. Of course, they harness you in the, these things. And Missy and Noah are on the, both sides. And, and they were all hooked together. So it's not like, you know, somebody's going to go off, you know, one side or the other. We're all hooked together. And, and I almost feel confined. But my arms are free. Because they said, keep your arms to you. And I said, buddy, you don't have to worry about that. My arms are tightly on my body. And so, you know... It, but it was a slow process. I thought Christmas was going to come before we got up to the top. And you can, of course, see everything. And it reminds you as you're going up how high you are. And I, rem I was the whole time reminding myself, this is why you said no. This is why you said never. But I was taking a step of faith. And then we get up to the top. And I want to show you this next picture of Noah that I took once he released himself. Do you notice his angle? He is like vertical. His head is looking at the ground. And let me tell you, because when they first released that cord, which again is a whole other sermon, and I had a, I had a prayer moment at that time. And, and Missy and Noah promised that they would not say what was coming out of my mouth during that moment. Because I'm telling you, I was close to God at that time. It really wasn't that bad. It was funny. Um, but then it releases you and you just fall. You know, you're just falling. You're not in a roller coaster cart with this big steel thing, you know, wrapped around you. It's just you on this wire. And, it, and then eventually you swing out. But let me tell you, I, I think I would do it again. I think so. Because you, as scary as that was, there's a reason that I did that and took that step. Because for one, I, I, I was sure of this step that I was going to take. Because I saw people doing it. Noah and Missy both talk about what it was like. They were going to be there with me. And so I knew that, I was gonna, that I'm pretty sure about this step. But I also knew that I wanted to experience this myself. I wanted to finally be able to say that, yes, I'm going to do this again, or no, I can tell you with all confidence I'm not going to do this again. But I wanted that experience, and I wanted to be able to experience with them. So that's why we did it together. And, and I think as I look back on it, and I remember, and I don't forget that experience, I'll probably do it again, because it was... Although my heart was in my throat and I was, I'm telling you, I don't realize how close I was to God in that moment, but I think I would do it again. And folks, sometimes God is saying, listen, I'm sure because I'm God and you can, be, you can trust me. And, and he's saying, enjoy my presence in this step that you're taking. Because all of scripture reminds you that I'm going to be there and never leave you nor forsake you. That I'm going to be the one that's going to redeem you from that darkness. That I'm going to remember and enjoy that step together. And never forget. Never forget how much I love you. What step are you taking today? Let's pray together.